<laughs> hey, y'all got one back. Miles Slusher was born on March 1st, 2002, son of PJ and Blanca Slusher. He has five siblings, Philip, Jessica, Austin, Anthony, and Reality. He attended Broken Arrow High School, the class of 2020, self-described as quiet by nature. When Miles Slusher gets on the field, he expresses himself loud and clear. In high school, Miles Slusher was a four-star prospect by Rivals, 24-7 Sports, and ESPN. He rated as the number five safety in the country by 24-7 Sports and ranked second in the state of Oklahoma by 24-7 Sports and ESPN. Miles Slusher slotted in ESPN's top 300 at 204, a four-year varsity letter winner at Broken Arrow High School. Slusher recorded 26 tackles, two for loss, with one sack, an interception, and four pass breakups as a senior in 2019. He helped the Tigers to a 9-3 overall record with a semifinal appearance in the Class 6A1 Oklahoma playoffs. He tallied 68 total stops, three tackles for loss, with two interceptions and a recovered fumble during his junior campaign. He guided Broken Arrow High School to a spotless 13-0 record and the Oklahoma class 6A1 state championship after a 28-20 victory over Jinx. He racked up 41 total tackles, 37 solo, with four interceptions in 2017. He chose Arkansas over Alabama, LSU, Ole Miss, Missouri, Texas A&M, Nebraska, Notre Dame, Oregon, and others.
that being said, I have to be decommitted from Oregon. I decided I will spend my next three to four years at the University of Arkansas. Yay. What sold you on Arkansas? Um, I mean, I, I want to play in the SEC. That would definitely play a big factor. Um, this coach Pittman, he kept it real, real with me. I uh, heard nothing but positive things about him. He's real genuine, so that definitely played a factor. Mm -hmm. What about the SEC makes you want to jump uh, You play competition every week, in it, uh, week in and week out. So um, it just motivates me to do better and keep working. So. How much did the coaching change at Arkansas play in your decision? Um, it played a big factor, I think, because, I mean, I ended up there. So it definitely played a big factor because at first I wasn't going to take an official. So was that, so when, when Coach Pittman got hired and, and they made the change, is that when you really started to consider them seriously? Yes, sir, I definitely did because I already had a relationship with Coach Pittman, so it definitely just carried on So when he came to Arkansas. You said he was real and genuine. How does he display that when talking with you? Um, he just doesn't sugarcoat anything. Uh, I think he always – you could tell when you look at somebody's eyes if they're keeping it real with you or not. Um, I just felt everything he said was pretty genuine. Um, just, I feel like he's an authentic person. So. How tough was the decision to decommit from Oregon? Uh, it was very tough. Uh, it took me a while. Um, definitely took me a minute to finally just come to myself and realize what I really wanted to do. So um, it definitely took a minute. Um, I had to sleep over it, pray about it, and sleep on it. So I woke up this morning feeling pretty confident. Very earlier, but it was it wasn't until today that you made your final decision. Yes, sir. It was uh, actually this morning. I signed it like ten. So, with, with your left hand or your right hand? Um, I try with my left hand. Yeah. nature, Miles Slusher's hits for Broken Arrow were boisterous. Slusher's back home in Broken Arrow from Arkansas. He's getting up at 6 a.m. to grind for his Razorbacks. We get these bands. I use bands like these. Doing like uh, curls with them. The Hogs didn't even get to kick off spring practice before the SEC shut activities down for the semester. The team, under first-year head coach Sam Pittman, is still getting to know each other. Once you get that bond, um, and get people out their comfort zone. Lord knows what can happen every day. In Slusher's first semester, he's been pushed to be a vocal leader, which is way far out of his comfort zone. If I don't understand something, if I don't agree with some, just communicating. Like you don't have to always be at an argument. Like this, you have to agree to disagree. Slusher says the person pushing him the most to step outside of his comfort zone is first-year defensive coordinator and former Missouri head coach. Barry Odom. Slusher says Odom is constantly in his ear, asking him to speak up in meetings. The message is clear. I have to be a leader coming in as a freshman. Uh, he already knew I wasn't much of a 
communication, but that's one big uh, key that he said we're going to fix. So. Slusher says Odom has let the Hogs know that if they work hard and communicate well, they can drastically improve over the past season's results. Covering news that matters, I'm Luke Slaybaugh, Fox 23 Sports. Well, Georgia won the toss. They defer, so Arkansas will get the football first, and we do know who their quarterback will be. So Georgia, ranked fourth in the country, will kick it away. And that one will sail through the back of the end zone, and the Arkansas offense under the direction of former Florida Gator Felipe Franks, who had a nice run of things in Gainesville, was the first freshman quarterback to start in Gainesville down at the swap since 1988. Matter of fact, let him do a 10 and three record, but then things kind of went uh, haywire. Last year in Lexington, got hurt, sidelined for the remainder of the season. Knew that he wasn't going to get that job with Kyle Trask the way he played last year. Wanted to play football, keep playing. He and Sam Pittman hooked up. It was a match made in heaven for these two guys. Arkansas needed a QB. Felipe wanted to play, and this is his spot. Yeah, not many times in this league you can get a guy to transfer who has experience in this league. Felipe Franks has done it, and he's in a new system. See how he reacts today. Fifth year senior out of Crawfordsville, Florida. First play. Quick throw, pass is caught, and a broken tackle and a loose football. Scooped up by Arkansas, and they will have it around midfield. James Cook couldn't hold on to the pigskin, and the Hawks have it. Wow, that first turnover to have hurts you really bad. Fighting for the extra yards, trying to get that first down, and loses that football. You see if he's down at all, or this ball just gets punched out. You see the second effort there, and as he's going, trying to get that first down, that ball is absolutely out and loose. And Arkansas picks it up. What a huge play for them coming out of here. Strips that football, balls out. Arkansas ball. Jalen Catalan. The safety strips the ball away from Cook. Arkansas will have it near midfield. Let's look at the, the red hat that are flying to the football. You see three, four guys flying to the football. Barry Odom was adamant he wanted all guys being aggressive at that football. As a true freshman in 2020, Miles Slusher played in six games and made one start at Dimeback. He totaled 15 tackles, nine solo, with one tackle for loss. He tied for the team lead recovering two fumbles. In his first career game, he recovered a fumble against number four Georgia on September 26. He earned his first career start in the Arkansas win at Mississippi State on October 3rd, making three tackles. He set career highs, registering five tackles, all solo stops with a forced fumble, fumble recovery, and first career tackle for loss against LSU on November 21st. He was the first SEC freshman to record at least five solo tackles, one forced fumble, and one fumble recovery in a game since 2011. 
According to Pro Football Focus, Miles Slusher played 199 snaps and earned a 65.7 defensive grade. He posted a season-high defensive grade of 78.2 against LSU. He saw action on 199 defensive and 18 special team plays. Sit up in a big chair. Yeah, Miles Slusher, Graham Morgan here. Bob, you with us off, please. Oh, sorry, I got to unmute myself. Sorry about that. You think I'd have it down by now? Um, hey, Grant, you're a, a Burlesworth finalist again. Just well, not a surprise, probably, but what was your reaction to that? I was excited. Um, I definitely think that's some hard I, I'm working for uh, or looking forward to that ceremony and uh, being able to do it in person. Um, but that was one of my goals coming back this year and being able to have that opportunity to be able to try to win that award again. Um, and it definitely helps um, when I can be able to be on that award um, finalist and be able to still be winning games. So um, as the team goes and the team wins, then it's it's good for me as well. Uh, what do you think Miles there, there's done at end of the defense? Obviously, Jalen Catalan, those are, those are big shoes to fill. How do you think he's done for you guys? Got got a couple picks uh, and everything? Um, Slush has done amazing. Um, I was telling, I think, Coach Shear today, I think the, the way he's progressed in the games he's played since Catalan's been out is you, you wouldn't really know that we're missing somebody back there. Um, he's been able to be vocally leading uh, our defense now. Um, and at the beginning of the year, no one would have wanted him or no one would have thought he could do that. Um, but now the way he's being demanding, the way he's been vocal and even the plays he's been making, it just shows right there what he's done and how he's hard, how hard he's worked. Um, he's not a young buck no more. He's a guy who's really stepped up and they're his own shoes. Um, I don't like it. I guess people say you got to fill his shoes all the time, but Slush is filling his own shoes right now and he's doing really well and he's doing a good job at it. Miles, could you describe that that pick you had the other day and just how, how things are going for you as a starter? Um, the pick the other day, um, well, Coach told us all week that when they go uh, double twins, that it was vertical. So I just listened to them and happened to, it happened to happen during the game. So I just did my job and it came out with the interception. And then as far as being a starter, you seem like you're settling in pretty good. How, how's that been? Uh, it's been real good. You know, um, at first it, it was tough, but I've adjusted to it kind of well and um, being more vocal. So it's be coming along. Okay, th thanks guys. Tom. Coach Pittman said Monday that convincing the team that having the belief to win a game like this is a real key. I already, you guys believe you can win games, but winning Alabama is maybe next level. Uh, how important is that, Grant? Yeah, I think, um, Believing in something is – the word belief is something that um, you think is going to happen without seeing. Like, if you believe in something, then you, you, you're you thinking it's going to happen without seeing it or knowing that it's happened. But we like the word no around here. We like to know we're going to do it. Um, so, like, we, we've seen what we can do. We've, we've seen that we can win games. Uh, we beat LSU at LSU. Um, we played a really good Texas a and team really well at a neutral site. So – uh, we know what we can do. Um, we just got to treat this game and be able to focus on us. Um, it's very important as a team to be able to be on one page. And if we have some guys who don't think we can win, then obviously it's going to combat everybody and it's going to be like people rowing against us. Um, and you got to have everyone on the same page. But yeah, it's huge. It's huge to be able to say, listen, we can we can go win. and We can go beat Alabama at Alabama. Um, they're, it's a logo on the side of the helmet. They're guys. They're, they're, they play football just like we do. They have a 100-yard field. They have a lot of fans. So do we. We we we're not. We've never been in a situation where we don't think we could win. We just got to be able to go and do us and be able to focus on us. Yeah, Miles, if you could address that too. How important is the belief part in this game? Um, it's just we go one game at a time. So I think it's just a, it's not just another. It's another game, honestly. Uh, we just prepare like we've been preparing the last few weeks, the, really the whole season. And I really believe in what the game plan is for this week. So I, I believe that we, we're going to win this game. Propels okay. them into Atlanta to meet Georgia for the SEC championship. 
They had a fine season for Arkansas as well at 3-3 three and 7-3 three and and three overall. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Nestler with Gary Danielson. Jamie Erdahl's down on the field. They don't measure SEC West championships around here in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> they measure national championships, Gare, and two more hurdles to get to that point where they can and play. And they're not low hurdles. Look at our Papa John's starting lineup, and it brings us to number nine. Bryce Young, the leader of the Tide. There's his numbers. Season high, five touchdown passes a week ago. And the rest of the offense for the Tide looks like this. And Jamison Williams had a huge game last week. Six catches, three touchdowns, 158 yards. He's their number one receiver as far as yardage. And then Mechie as well on the other side. So two dangerous wide receivers. Slade Bolden is the third. He's in there right now. But this is Brian Robinson, Jamie talked about on senior day, picking up about three on his first carry. Defensively for the Hogs. We talk about the linebacking core and this guy up front when we had them earlier this year he had three sacks in the ball game that we did and he is a tear on the defensive line forced two holding penalties as well that's right there's a quick throw out to Bolden he's got a first down across the 35 out to the third block it little pirouette there by the quarterback young Jamison Williams doesn't get anything out of it and back lost about three yards Yeah, great job by Ladarius Bishop that time the corner he read it fast and broke it up beat the block to the outside Remember they threw a quick kind of one before and he got the block on the corner this time. No And it brings up third down again 30 yards Back to Robinson Busts through the hole Brian Robinson ten more so when Derrick Henry's year of running the football, he carried the ball for a running back, non-quarterback runs, 70% of the time. Brian Robinson is over 55% of the rush attempts. Comes now from Brian Robinson. It's only going to grow, as you said. He's the guy for the rest of the year. In 2021, Miles Slusher played in 11 games with seven starts. He tallied 50 tackles, 33 solo, with three tackles for loss, including a half a sack. He finished tied for second on the team in interceptions with two. He racked up four pass breakups and two quarterback hurries. He recorded a tackle in his season debut against Georgia Southern on September 18th. He had a career high 10 tackles with a pass breakup against Missouri on November 26th. He logged five stops, all solo, including a tackle for loss against Penn State on January 1st in the Outback Bowl. This is only a partial list of Miles Lusher's 2021 statistics. For the full listing, please visit cubuffs.com. Yeah, just uh, for all you guys, uh, 10 days out, um, is this a, is this kind of the longest ten days of uh, of your life? Yeah, it's been kind of a waiting game, but we're just trying to prepare and make sure we're doing everything right so we can be victorious when we play Cincinnati. Yeah, it's really been going by fast for me. Um, really, just taking advantage of every day, so it's been really quick for me. Uh, it's it's a it's a work in process. Uh, just help us work, be more consistent. Uh, come in every day consistent that way we'd be ready for when the season comes. Matt, you're you probably enrolled in, in May, I guess. No. June. June, June. What is what has this stretch been like? I mean, is Arkansas what you thought it was going to be when you came on your visit, and and how have you felt like you've adjusted in these last sixteen practices? Uh, I felt like I adjusted well. Um, these guys been like my brothers. They took me in with open arms, and you know they just f make me feel welcome. So I want to say. Uh, it won't really, I ain't really come here looking for anything in particular, just you know, a hard-working group of men, uh, coaching staff behind me, and it's just been great. I got a question for Miles. So you've covered both these guys. Where have you seen Warren's improvements from last year, and what do you make of Matt so far? Uh, Definitely Warren's route running. Like, it's definitely, like, you could just tell he's been putting in the craft. I mean, he was already he was already a great route runner, but you could just tell the extra work he put in this year. And then Matt. Um, he's definitely he's a new guy, so like he got speed, he can run routes, and he can catch the ball at high radius. He, like he got the big radius on him, so it's just 
it's always we always getting better guarding these type of guys. That way we'll be ready for the game too. Miles, you've played a lot of safety in your career. It looks like you're working at nickel right now. What what's kind of the differences with that position, and do you are you do you like the position? Oh uh, yeah, I'm loving the position. You know, it's something new to learn, but um, I'm just grasping it as it goes. And um, coach put me in a great position this year. So um, and I think everybody will be able to thrive. You know, uh, the safeties we got, we got Jay, we got Cat, Sim, uh, Brittany. Um, the list keeps going on. Um, and then you got the corners. So it's just, we, out, wherever we put on the field, everybody can play in any position. So I think Coach knows what he's doing, definitely. Matt, I was looking at your numbers at Toledo last year, and it, it looked like a lot of your production came down the stretch. I mean, almost all your production last five games. Was there an adjustment period there? Like, what kind of led to your, your resurgence down the stretch? And do you think you can maybe get off to a faster start, you know, this year at Arkansas? Uh, I feel like I definitely get to a fast start, you know, the way – we are approaching practice every day. We're working hard, playing fast as a unit. Um, at Toledo, I really don't really know the situation, but I made the most of my opportunities when they presented itself. You led the team with not well, the receivers coming back. You had 19 catches, which was leading, other than Trey, who had tied in. But I just wide receivers question mark all spring and then the preseason stuff, but now it's one of the team's strengths. Talk about that, just how these, like Matt and Isaiah and some of these guys and Jaden just really picked it up. I think when we heard that, um, that the wide receivers was the biggest question mark, I think that's when we took it personal, everybody in the room. And uh, I think we just made it our mission to be great every day, like, and be consistent, you know? So I think that's what it was. So maybe not, but no one may catch 66 passes like Traylon did last year, but don't you feel like it's probably a deeper group, though? Yeah, it's a lot of talent everywhere. I, I feel like everybody can make a play at any time. Matt and Warren, I'm curious. We've heard a lot about Hudson Clark, how he's doing in fall camp. You guys, I'm assuming both of you have gone up against him. What have you been seeing from Hudson? Um, and then, Warren, you played against him last year a little bit, you know, in practice. What, where have you seen him improve? I say I seen Hud improving his patience and um, really knowing his assignment and what he got to get done at the at the corner spot. Like I I love him because he's really like attentive with the details and when I'm breaking down he's he's breaking down. He got good feet, so I I, I really seen him improve this this camp. Um, kind of just what I said, you know, he's patient. Um, he knows his assignment. He's a dependable guy. He's gonna do. What he's supposed to do, if he's supposed to be deep half, he's going to guard deep half. If he's covering the flats, he's going to cover the flats. So he's a real patient guy. He worked hard. I've been hearing a lot the last few days just about how much you've improved in, as, in your game. And I just wondered if there's something in particular that you've done differently in the off season or in this fall camp that's that's led to that improvement or what changed for you? I wouldn't say anything really changed. I just I, I take it personal now to win like and win a lot of games. So. I just think I just I want the team to be great. I, I want to be great, so I think that's what it was. Yeah. And then Matt, how has it been working with KJ? Um, is he different from other quarterbacks that you've played with in any way, or, or how have you adjusted to playing with him? Uh, most definitely different. Um, his size, his athletic ability, and his arm strength. So he's a great quarterback. Matt, uh, just for for people who maybe haven't seen you play before, how would you describe your game, and do you maybe? model your game after anybody in particular? Um, well, I really kind of model my game off of a lot of receivers. Um, I ain't going to say anyone in particular, but my game, I see I'm pretty versatile. I can run intermediate routes, uh, short routes, and deep routes. So anywhere a coach needs me. Man, where, when you got in the portal, who all reached out to you and did – I know Sam Pittman obviously didn't coach your position in Georgia, but – uh, did that relationship have a lot to do with you coming here, or why'd you pick Arkansas? Who else were, were you considering? Um, a lot of schools uh, hit me up. Um, more schools I was uh, wanting to go to was uh, SEC, but um, the relationship with Coach Pitt was the reason I came, but also relationships I had with other people that I was at Georgia with, like Pat Doherty, um, Fernando, um, the line coach, um, strength staff, so really all that. Times you know when guys come in fall camp, they but they haven't been there in the spring. It takes them a little while to get adjusted. You seem like you hit the ground running. Was there 
did you feel like you picked things up right away or why do you think you had such a quick start here uh just my mentality um every day every day i went over my playbook every day i was on the field and you know just my presence i just felt like made these guys work harder so me doing what i do i just felt like it helped me out a lot Warren, um, sam Pim was in here the other day saying he never thought I'm paraphrasing here, but he basically was saying he never thought you'd be as good as you are now. He never thought you'd be this kind of player. I don't know if he's – has he said that to you, and how does that make you feel? And mm. specifically, in what ways do you think you're a lot better than you were last year? Uh, I just I just try to change my mentality and my, like, mental approach to the game. So, like, um, you know, that's great that to hear that from him. But um, I, was, I had that – like, I knew I had to be better since I, I played the last game. Penn State, so I knew I had to get better from that moment, and I made that my mission and my goal. Of replacing the legend Desmond Ritter, who, as you mentioned, probably the greatest quarterback in Cincinnati history. Well, Bryant has waited his turn. Three years as the backup to Ritter, then he transferred last season to Eastern Michigan, got some experience, and comes back, wins the battle. He is a pocket passer, which probably changes the offense a little bit, but he's waited a long time. 20 for rush yards against Miami a couple seasons ago. Hand off Cincinnati, and they're piling up some rush yards on this play down the right sideline and all the way across midfield. Charles McClellan with the long run for the Bearcats. Under four minutes to go once the clock starts rolling again. First half. And they'll go hurry up after getting a really good block on the edge. Up tempo. Good trivia question, by the way. McClellan gets another carry. I, I, my initial thought was when they're a P. Ryan who had a huge. Game mm -hmm. for Oklahoma. Yep. And I thought maybe that would be part of the answer, but no. I'm going to say the question was too hard. Too hard? Too hard for me, anyway. Yeah, it's a good nugget, though. I'm yeah, glad great to nugget. learn the answer. Yeah. The answer. Yeah. Miles Montgomery in the game now, second and six. Bearcats on the move. Bryant play fake throws it short and the big hit in the open field the catch by the tight end Leonard Taylor but then Miles Slusher put the hit on and Slusher might have taken the worst of it he's down and yeah, we've talked about how physical this game has been so far big hitting big tackles Slusher that time coming up really trying to deliver a blow. I think was it Leonard Taylor? I yeah. think the tight end. Yeah, that's a 255 pound tight end that he was slammed into. Good effort. Got his shoulder in there, tried to keep his head up. But that's a that's a big man and he got him in powerful area of the thighs. Mm. So Miles Slusher has made a couple really nice plays in this first half for Arkansas. Razorbacks lost some players from their secondary. So Slusher is a guy they're counting on for some big time performance this year. And while they look at Miles Slusher, let's check in with Matt in studio. Hi guys. All right, Matt, we'll look forward to that. Interesting thing that Jim Harbaugh is doing with his quarterback position and uh, okay McNamara played well today It was everybody else on the roster who really played well a nice performance for the Wolverines And then he'll give quarterback number two an opportunity next week and then I guess the idea is to make a choice going into week three it, That's different uh, first time I've come across any coach handling it that way Well slusher turned over I thought he was going to sit up, but I'm not sure. So hopefully Miles Slusher is okay. I mean, look, we, we sometimes you you play up the physical nature of a game, and this one certainly is is worthy of that. And you hope everybody comes out of it all right. Yeah, it, it's it's been as physical as any opening week game that I can recall, and certainly any game this weekend. I mean, it's been. It's been incredibly physical. And I think Rod uh, you know the, the scene the atmosphere you're playing an SEC team on the road after losing all that talent you have that incredible year last year that Cincinnati had losing in the playoff yeah. to a great Alabama team 
And the, the questions were, well, okay, was last year the aberration? Could they keep it? I mean, look, I know it's not even a full half of football, but really in just about every way you could measure, they've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Arkansas. Yeah, I mean, their pride was really sort of challenged. You know, could Cincinnati be a physical team? Can they stand up to an SEC West team after having trouble with that against Alabama? You see Slusher get up, thank goodness. And they've more than held their own today physically against Arkansas. Both coaches echo that sentiment that you're talking about. Look, we always feel like we're the toughest team on the field, and this is a game where we're going to find out yeah. because they feel the same way. Yeah. You know, and people doubted whether Cincinnati could reload after losing nine players to the NFL. You know, in the top teams, and the argument from Cincinnati was look, top programs do reload. We're a top program now. But the public kind of doubted that. And right now in this first half, they're showing that they're reloading with a lot of talent. They've had opportunities to be ahead in this ball game, and they've just missed a few. We welcome you to AT&T Stadium. Arkansas and Texas A&M set to go. Texas A&M won the toss. They elected to defer. Joe Tessitore, Greg McElroy, Katie George with you here in Arlington, Texas. 79th meeting between these two AM had won nine straight up until last year. Caden Davis to get the night started kicking away AJ Green back to return for the Hogs. He will let it sail deep into the end zone and that will bring out KJ Jefferson. Chick-fil-A impact players look this way tonight Greg. And Texas A&M their impact players on offense very simple Devon A. Chain starting running back big hitter home run hitter there in the backfield with great track star speed Anaya Smith versatile slot receiver and then defensively for the Arkansas Razorbacks Drew Sanders been off the charts good moving him around in the middle of the defense and Miles Slusher back from an injury to help shore up a pass defense that has really struggled the last few weeks and him facing the first third down of the night first drive was just three plays negative three yards and a punt Here's a chain and he is gobbled up and tackled for a loss in the backfield was Miles Slusher and they're happy to have him back. Just a great job by Slusher here gets blocked fights through the contact you're going to see him just coming right off the edge tries to get hit by the inside tries to get hit by the outside as a result neither guy can get a piece of him and Slusher drops a chain for the loss just an excellent play and it's nice to have him back in a secondary that's been reeling the last few weeks he was injured week one against Cincinnati trying to tackle a big tight end on the opening drive that was Drew Sanders the Alabama transfer who was able to get to Max Johnson on the first drive third down and 12 four man rush Johnson Sanders tracking him again Johnson gets free gonna tuck run die for the line again let's see where they mark him and he will be just short that was Slusher again who made the tackle as he came to find Johnson. Amazing job there by Johnson. Just incredible effort. Thought he was going to be dropped in the backfield. Looked like Sanders is going to drop him. He makes a miss. He does a really good job of extending for the line to gain. Just comes up a little bit short as you can see. I mean he is almost brought down in the backfield. A nice open field tackle there by Slusher. Two nice plays by Slusher on that drive. But an excellent job by Russell dropping the back. Third down and 14. Jefferson going deep, wide open, and waiting for it and diving into the end zone is Warren Thompson. Oh, my, call those hogs. And this is a defense that's basically designed saying, hey, you cannot throw it over our head. But you're going to see this guy come and grab the safety, the piece of cake over the top. Really nicely done as it takes a half second to develop. And a little late to identify. But a nice throw by K.J. Jefferson as they get behind the defense. 
I formation with Johnson as the tailback on third and two. Play action off of it as he's able to get it to crown over. A flag is down. We will check on that. Tackle by Slusher. So they go I formation and they leak out the fullback, number 24, Ernest Crownover. Illegal shift, offense, two players moving at the same time and a lot of from the second. Five yard penalty, okay, third down. Third penalty on the Aggies tonight. And you're going to see it as the motion starts to work to the left. I mean, you're going to see both backs slightly move. Watch, there it is. Two guys move at the same time. And this is what AM just continues to do. I mean, just one mistake after another. You have a fresh set of downs, you convert easily on the third and short. Now you back yourself up because of a self-inflicted mistake. And you just can't continue to do that. And it feels like that's been the theme here in the first month of the season for the Aggies. So out by Knicks at 428 yards in that game. Cameron Ward threw for 375. That was a thriller. Worst Aggie starting field position from their own seven. A-chain trying to change that, and he can quickly. Watch out! Can he get the block to the outside? A-chain, mega chunk play, out of trouble, just like that. 63 yards, A-chain. And it's just a great job. You're going to see a block out on the end. But you're going to see the defenders get squeezed inside. A-Chain is out the gate. Just a thing of beauty. Terrible job there by Arkansas. Two defenders in one gap. And A-Chain is house call. Told you a little while ago, man. Every time he gets the football, you just hold your breath. He's got so much speed showing it off right there. What a huge play for the Aggies giving them life. That's their first first down of the game. It He's a little bit more under control. It does look like he's going low. I do think that's the correct call. And with that, they're marking this back as a second down. Johnson's going to run it himself. He's going to have the line to gain as he slides down. And they will mark him at the 44-yard line. So it's a first down for AM. All the matter. Miles Slusher with the tackle. This is Fayetteville. And welcome to homecoming on the hill. The Arkansas Razorbacks are home for the first time in, in over a month, taking on the Red Hot Liberty Flames on SEC Network. T.J. Green is in the backfield, and he takes the football and goes past the 10, up near the 12. Getting a few yards on first down. Again, Day Day Hunter is out with a leg injury, so it's been Shedro Lewis and T.J. Green running the football. And that's the third string quarterback, Jonathan Bennett, that's beating the Razorbacks. At home, on at the road. road. At home, at home for, for Arkansas. I, this is when I'm interested in Hugh Freeze, what kind of pace that he wants to run this offense in this series at right now. Bennett's under pressure and he's going down. Nobody covered Miles Slusher on the blitz. Oh, that's on the quarterback there. You know, Slusher was showing it from the start. You should know, hey, am I going to be protected or not from that nickel coming off the edge? Offensive line is, offensive line's going to the right. They're in slide protection. You need to know if, hey, I'm hot off one to my backside, and I got to get the ball out now. Great job, great timing on the blitz for Arkansas to put Liberty third and long situations. Once again, double three. All right, don't miss offense. We'll take the field now behind quarterback Jackson Dart. Obviously, the USC transfer has had a heck of a season, Jordan, but what separates him maybe from some other lane gifted quarterbacks you've studied? Well, he's a gunslinger, but I think his willingness to be physical in the run game, he's not the fastest, not the biggest, but he's a savvy runner, and he's not afraid to use his legs. I expect that to be a big part of the Ole Miss offense tonight. Ole Miss starts with Judkins offset, dark in the gun. Woo, what a grab for Mingo right off the bat. Flag on the play. Pass interference, offense number eight. That's the goal. 
Had to get Jaden Johnson there, but it's noteworthy. Jonathan Mingo in the slot for Ole Miss. He's had to play the tight end position for this squad the last couple weeks because they've been banged up at that position. Now you get a look at Maliki. He just came off blocking. And that's one of those read plays that Ole Miss is going to have. The option play for Jackson Dart to pull it and spit it out to the perimeter. Dart under center. Jet sweep. No gain. Nice penetration from the Arkansas defense as Miles Slusher in the backfield for the Razorbacks. And, and that man coverage, is the pump even necessary? Not necessarily, no. He probably didn't have to. Dart. They got a hand on him, but somehow he pulled a KJ Jefferson and got out of there. And surged forward and picks up nine. That's going to leave third and short. Dart gets it away. Fantastic grab. And a pickup of 11 for Jordan Watkins. And they're going to bring on the kicking team and take three of the kicks. 